All right, so let's go ahead and get started this morning. Uh, again, we're going to be taking a look at how to replace skies, and I'm going to do a couple different examples. And the goal is to really get you comfortable uh, removing backgrounds uh, or removing skies from images that you want to swap out. So we're going to be covering some masking techniques today. Uh, we're also going to be covering uh, really the topic of layers and stacking. And again, any questions, type those in on the control panel, and I'll answer those questions later on uh, in the webinar. But other than that, let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this photo here from Lightroom. You can see I can access images from Lightroom, or if I want to, I can also access as a standalone. If I launch the Perfect Photo Suite 8 as a standalone, I've got all of my photos here through the Browse module. And the Browse module is great because I can browse all of my folders that I have of my photos, wherever they may reside. So if they're in Google Drive or SkyDrive or iCloud, PhotoStream, or maybe I've got them on an external hard drive or on the network, I can easily access those photos and then have them available to begin editing. So for this example today, let's take an image right here. So here we have a girl, and it looks like either an uh, older sister. And we want to remove this plain blue sky and drop in something a little bit more dramatic. So once I've selected a file or a photo that I want to edit, let's bring them right in into layers. Ordinarily, I recommend editing a copy, but because I'm not going to save my work, I'm going to edit the original of this one. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to show me if there's any other uh, layers uh, beneath this top image. So it's actually a PSD file, which is just a standard Photoshop file that has multiple layers associated. So you can see if I turn layers off, I can turn layers on and below. I can make it visible however I want to. I can rearrange layer stacks if I need to by simply dragging one underneath of the other. I've got full control over where everything resides. Over here on the left, I've got all my toolbars. Uh, I've got my toolbar with my individual tools that I can access. And if we're looking for more skies or more backgrounds, we can go over to extras. Now inside of layers, you're going to click on extras and you're going to uncollapse on one extras. And now you're going to see these categories. So I've got backgrounds, borders, textures. Let's go to my backgrounds. Uncollapse backgrounds and then I can go and let's click on skies. This is where I actually got that sky layer that we see right here. I got this from our extras menu. And you just scroll through to the find new one you want. And then when you want to use that sky layer, all you have to do is double click on it. And it will ask you, do you want to edit a copy, which would be creating a new file, or do you want to add it as a layer? This is where you say add as a layer. By adding it as a layer, I'll click OK. You'll notice it stacks it now directly below. Now again, I can move that up if I want that to be the new background. Or I can stack multiple skies on different layers, and then I can toggle through and see which one I like the most. So for this example, let's go ahead now and remove this plain blue sky. All we have to do is select that top layer and click on Mask. Now when we open up Perfect Mask, we're going to remove this background based on color. Now it could be tough, you know, removing backgrounds around the wispy hair here. So what I want to do is I want to walk you through a couple different options. My first option could be I could simply grab my magic brush. My magic brush, all you have to do is click and drag and it samples color. And then it will only erase those colors that you sample. You can do it this way. Or you can also grab your drop brush. And with that drop brush, you can wipe out big sections or big chunks of color. Now, when I do this, I like to click on the number six on my keyboard. This will give me a segment view. My segment view, you can see how the colors are broken up here. My segment view, I can increase and make more segments. You see how you get smaller segments? Or I can decrease to make bigger segments. So I can control my segment size. And that's going to help me depending on what kind of colors are showing. Now from my segment view, I can see, okay, I've got a good separation between foreground and background now. 
let's go back to five. I click number five. If I click four, it'll show me in mask mode. Three will give me a gray. Two will give me a white background. One will give me a mask mode. And then the Enyo will just give you the original or the accent mark will give you the original photo. Five gives me the composite mode. We're seeing that cloudy sky directly underneath. Now from here, we'll do my drop brush and I'm going to simply paint over the colors in the background to erase them. And then when it hits new colors, it stops erasing. Now, if I have a little bit of a halo, let's click and zoom in. You can see just a little bit of a halo, and that's okay. It's actually really pretty accurate. Look at all that information that I kept, all the wispy hair that I would have ordinarily lost. If you have a halo or a little edge hanging on, grab your chisel tool. And with that chisel tool, you can control the amount, you can control the size. And then what I will do is I'll just simply go over it once or twice, just to kind of remove that halo. Now it's a lot more pronounced probably on my screen, but if I click and drag, it's just scrubbing away a few pixels. Now I can bump up the amount if I wanted to take away more. And you can probably see that's more dramatic. But I don't want to take away too much information. So uh, Command Z to undo. So I would drop down the amount a little bit. And then I can just kind of click away where I have any haloing. So it's a fast, easy way to go in, remove backgrounds, and drop in any new sky. So using your drop brush or your magic brush is a fast way to remove those backgrounds. And now you can see whatever layers directly underneath. Now if I go and I click uh, on my different perspectives. Let's click on four. This gives me my mask mode. This is actually showing me kind of a layer mask perspective. So now I can see exactly how great of a job it did. Now let's click apply. By clicking apply, it's going to take me back to perfect layers. So now you'll see my mask that I've created. You'll see this cloudy sky layer directly underneath. But what if I want a different cloud sky? Click on that cloud layer that we just brought in from our extras menu, and you can drag it up underneath. Now you can move that around if you want to. Grab your transform tool, and with that transform tool, you can move it around. So you've got full control over where this layer is going to reside. And if you don't like it, let's click apply first. If you don't like it, just change it back to the other layer. Just drag the other layer back on top. So now you have options. So if I'm going to replace a sky or replace a boring background, I will a lot of times drop in three or four different skies, and then I'll just toggle between the two of them. So now I can turn one on and off and see which one looks more natural or more realistic. All right, let's do another example. I'm going to click close. We're going to close down here uh, the entire Perfect Photo Suite 8. And let's jump back over into Lightroom. I talked about how you can use this seamlessly inside of Lightroom. Well, let's do that. If I have a file or a photo that I want to edit from Lightroom, I can select my file. I can go up to File, Plugin, Extras inside of Lightroom. And I'll select the Perfect Photo Suite 8. Now it's going to open up, and by default, it's going to open things up inside of Perfect Layers. Perfect Layers really is uh, the starting point. So that's where I've got all of my uh, different tools, my ability to bring in new layers, whatever I want to do. Now in this case, let's actually open up the other file. I've got two files back in my Lightroom catalog, and I realized that I had the other layers in this one. So let's go ahead do that process all over again. Just grab that photo, go File, Plugin, Extras. Not the Plugin Manager, but Plugin Extras. And select Perfect Photo Suite 8. Now we're going to see the layers that I have visible underneath the original photo. 
All right, so this is my sky layer. This is the new layer that I want directly below. So I have to get rid of this pinkish purplish sky. So let's go over and select perfect mask. And again, by selecting perfect mask, I'm going to remove these backgrounds simply based on color. So I'm going to go back over and grab my drop brush. The thing I like about the drop brush is that it will take away big sections or big chunks of color all at once. So I take my drop brush, I click and I drag across the sky to erase only colors in the sky. Now that I've done this, I can see if I zoom in, again, any halo or any residual color that may be hanging on. And I don't want this because it won't look good if you look very closely at my photo. So I need to get rid of that halo. So again, we grab our chisel tool. The chisel tool will just allow us to scrub a few pixels just off the edge of that mask we just created. Now, I don't want to go through this whole image and have to scrub by hand. So a real shortcut is to go and double click on the chisel tool. So watch this halo. And when I double click on my chisel tool, the halo disappears. It applies it to the entire edge. So we'll zoom back out. Now I can click Apply, and it's going to take me right back into Perfect Layers. So now, the only other thing I would want to do in this example is I would want to paint in the reflection on the water. So what we need to do now is we need to look at the layer that I have directly underneath. And with that layer, I need to select this bottom layer and I need to flip it. So all you do is you take your transform tool and with your transform tool, you're going to swing it around so it's the exact opposite. And now you're going to drag it down. So now I will have this on the bottom. Let's make that visible. Yep, so it should be right about there. Perfect. Now, let's paint in the reflection on the water. So make my top layer visible. Select the top layer, because that's where I want to do my masking. And now what I need to do is I need to take my masking brush and drop down the opacity dramatically. I don't want to do this at 100% because then it won't look natural or realistic. It'll just paint exactly through the water. What I want to do is I want to drop it down to maybe 15 or 20% and just kind of click through and adjust your feathering a little bit and just try to outline the mountains because obviously the mountains aren't going to be Uh, reflective, so you just kind of click and drag. So this way, I can start to see that reflection in the water. So you guys kind of get the idea now how easy it is to make uh, to paint in new skies and have it look natural and realistic. So that's a quick look at how to replace backgrounds and skies using Perfect Mask and Perfect Layers.